All right, I don't know why, but every once in a while I get these uh, urges to do these videos. But a lot of it has to do with guys that contact me about different things that I believe in or, or do. And I worry sometimes that the message of how to do them doesn't get across. So that's why I, I do these things. Um, you know, uh, I had an old teammate um, and a couple other guys uh, contact me. And, uh, I want to talk about teeter, okay, and the idea of what, why we did teeter. Um, and teeter came from this. Uh, I had a guy named uh, Rodney Austin who played uh, pro football. He was, a, he was a heck of a player. And I noticed that he used a certain pattern of footwork. And he was, I mean, he was a beast anyway, but I had a bunch of beasts uh, at Elon University. I had a bunch of stud kids. And he could really wild people. And of course, you know, we're, we're not talking about momentum. We're not talking about trap blocks and things like that. We're talking about when somebody's right on top of you or the teeter really was for a guy who was not in front of you and our concept of cover was to, to how do you get in front of a guy who's not in front of you and we learned very early on that a lead step you could block the guy but you couldn't get in front of him and in front i meant to cover him to get his outside and we're really talking specifically about the guard versus a heavy shade b gap player in a c gap run and we would get the we would get the uh, the three technique to funnel us back to the Apache side of things, and which is okay if there's nobody there. But usually we, I was just looking at my A gap tape. We we had add-ons and all kinds of stuff, but whatever. But anyway, what he did, what I, what I had been teaching was the brace step, and of course the brace step when you look at it from behind is stepping backwards, and the whole idea was to get get momentum okay, forwards or whatever momentum that you could get. And the idea was, and I, I got the, I, I heard Paul Alexander talk about the brace step, but my concept was to, was to brace like a, a guy who's working a, a gondola in Venice. He picks up the stick and he sticks it in the ground and pushes backwards to go forwards. Now we knew that you know, two point stance especially, but any any stance, right now we're in we're in equilibrium. We're we're balanced. And in order for us to go forward, we really have to condense hard on that front leg. Okay? We figured that by bracing like Paul Alexander, we would start an inertia moving forwards. Okay, the problem was, you see what I'm doing? When I step backwards, I'm gonna go forwards, and we were stepping under ourselves. We really couldn't get in front of the man who was not in front of us. So what Rodney was doing was he was stepping backwards and stepping backwards again. And originally I said stepping in the same bucket. So everybody calls this a bucket step. Okay, what he was doing was taking his bucket step, but rather than stepping forward and not getting in front of the guy, he was taking and stepping in the same bucket. We called that a scoot. I don't know why we called it a scoot, but that's what we called it. Okay, but what we know about weight, and this really is tied to the scoot, we needed to get our weight ahead of our feet in order for us to go at the man because eventually you got to go forward you know what i mean that's just the way it is <laughs> and we came up with the idea or concept of teeter and teeter was falling forward okay of course if you put both feet behind you you're going to fall forward but we wanted to fall forward without falling down so we 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 started talking about teetering and teetering is just think of a big rock, okay, and it's right balanced, it's stable, it's right on its on its little base. And you go to push it, and the inertia, it's difficult for a big rock to, to accelerate, and it accelerates kind of slowly, 
All right, it teeters for first, and then once that gravity grabs it, boom, it's going. And that's very difficult to stop. What we said was we wanted to maintain some inertia. Okay, we were not falling forward initially. Maintain some inertia until we could catch up to the defender. And please, if you do anything, if you're scooting, scoot versus guys. Or people that, if they're holding medicine ball, you know, dummies, shields, whatever, that are attacking you. They have to attack you. Because that guy, as you're falling forward, it's, it takes a while for your feet to catch up. Now, I, don't, I don't care what you do, lift, whatever. It's going to take a while for your feet to catch up. And you're never going to feel the teeter unless you run into something. Now, once you run in, I can't even do it here. Once you run into something, okay, you're in great shape. Right now you can do whatever, torque, you know, throw, uh, which is a torque, or torque up, which is, you know, I call it flipping or lifting, and, you know, everybody calls it double under, or, you know, hip roll, because you're, you're not strong enough here to, to move the load. But you got to have a load, and by load I mean this, a defender who's attacking you, and not just giving you resistance, okay, he's giving you pressure, okay? His weight plus his pressure plus his resistance is the load, okay? And what we found out, of course, was we didn't want to fight the load frontally. We didn't want to fight the guy's pressure, okay? We might fight his resistance. That's a, that's a whole other subject. I don't want to talk about that right now. I just want to talk about teeter. And teeter, if you're doing it right and you don't run into something, you better get your feet under you somehow. Okay? But if you're practicing teeter against a sled or against a guy standing there holding a medicine ball or holding a shield and he's not attacking you, you're not going to feel the teeter. You're not going to feel, okay, the, the rocker step of getting your feet behind you. And I can't do this, you know, I'm so old now, it's, it's tough. But I can brace and that front leg will hold me up. The idea is to start the teeter by the back leg. Now, what we learn by scooting is this. If we don't run into something, okay, we'll know, after a while, they'll be educated. They'll say, well, look, this three technique rocked out or whatever. I might scoot or I might just, in midair, I might just finish with a regular old forward, forward step and go into my shuffle okay, because now I'm in red light. And I don't want to get into that either now. I just want to talk about teeter. Remember, teeter, let's say I'm a 300-pound guy. I'm really not pretty slim, right? Okay. It's difficult for me to accelerate. And it's also, just think of a tree. You cut a tree and it, it starts, it wants to stay where it is, but you've removed its its stability. You've removed its, its base, its, its roots. And it falls over, it starts falling slowly. And as the torque develops and gravity grabs it, it accelerates. We want to have our feet behind us momentarily, stay in that incline position. And just, just to make sure that everybody understands, I can't, if a guy's giving me pressure, I can't block him like this. I can't do it. Okay, he's going to knock me over. He's going to get, and especially if he gets his hands in my armpits or chest or whatever. I got to have some kind of a, a lean on it. Now, once I get him in the chest, different story. Now I'm jacking him up, and I can bring my feet so I don't fall down. Because if I keep my feet back, I'm going to fall down. Okay? That has nothing to do with teeter. Okay, what I'm saying to you is if the more pressure you're getting from the opponent, the further back your feet are. And if you're really good at condensing, you don't have to be, and I'm stable right now, but I got to lean on something to show you. Hang on one second. The further my feet are back, the more pressure I can 
resist, but eventually I'm going to fall down. Lose it. You can see my feet are losing traction. That's why we do this. That's why we do this instead of this. Okay. As I, if I have to drive my feet backwards, if my if my heels are off the ground, I'm going to lose traction. That's why we do it like a hockey player. Okay. That's another subject. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about teeter. So I'm going to go, I'm going to scoot to this thing. I'm in teeter right now. Okay, my hands are in the wrong place, but I'm in teeter right now. Okay. I'm not. If that guy's got pressure, he's going to run me over backwards. Okay. That's the subject for today. Hope everybody's doing good. See you later.